U.S. nuclear-powered aircraft carriers and nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines are by far the two most powerful forms of power projection any country's ever wielded. SSBNs carry 70% of the U.S. operational nuclear deterrence arsenal and are considered the most survivable part of the nuclear triad. However, the service life of the current Ohio-class submarines will come to an end in the 2040s, which means that it's time to talk about who will be replacing them. The U.S. Navy has three types of submarines. Nuclear-Powered Attack Submarines SSN, Nuclear-Powered Cruise Missile Submarines SSGN, Nuclear-Powered Ballistic Missile Submarines SSBN. SSN and SSGN are multi-purpose vessels that perform various tasks not only in wartime but also in peacetime, and do not carry nuclear weapons. An SSBN, on the contrary, performs a single but extremely important task – strategic nuclear deterrence significantly reducing the territorial ambitions of even the most violent neighbors on the planet. To accomplish this task, SSBNs are armed with Submarine Launch Ballistic Missiles SLBMs, which are long-range missiles armed with nuclear warheads that SSBNs launch from vertical launch tubes located on the submarines. Today, the U.S. Navy operates 14 Ohio-class SSBNs, sometimes simply referred to as Trident SSBNs or even more simply Tridents due to the fact that they carry Trident D-5 ballistic missiles. These vessels, designed and built by the General Dynamics Electric Boat Division, were purchased back in fiscal years 1977 and 1991 and entered service from 1984 to 1997. Initially, these were credited with a 30-year service life, but a little later, it was extended to 42 years, divided into two 19-year operating periods with a four-year overhaul, the so-called Engineered Refueling Overhaul ERO. Eight vessels from this class are based in Bangor, Washington, at Puget Sound, and the remaining six are in Kings Bay, Georgia, near the Florida border. Their difference from most other ships in the Navy is not only being armed with 20 SLBMs, but also in alternating crews. While the lion's share of the vessels are operated by a single crew, SSBNs require multiple rotating crews, called blue and gold, to maximize the percentage of time the subs are in deployed status. However, even these important elements of the fleet have to be swapped out sooner or later. Thus, the service life of the first of 14 Ohio SSBNs, SSBN 730 USS Henry M. Jackson, expires in 2027, and the service life of the last submarine in 2040. This is where the newest class of submarine, the Columbia, enters the scene. These are promising nuclear submarines that will replace the Ohio class and will carry dozens of nuclear warheads, ensuring that a significant part of the U.S. underwater nuclear arsenal is hidden from the prying eyes of their enemies. Since September 2013, U.S. Navy officials have regularly named the Columbia class program a top priority, which meant it was guaranteed funding, even if it had to be cut for other active Navy programs. The Columbia program itself, until 2016, was better known as the Ohio Replacement Program ORP, and SSBN X, and its current name made the Navy face a rare embarrassment. The fact is that the U.S. Navy already has a Columbia, or rather, the Columbia SSN 771 is the 21st Los Angeles class attack submarine, commissioned back in 1995. And by the time the first submarine of the new class enters service with the Navy in 2031, the SSN 771 of the same name will still be in operation. Since Navy regulations state that no two ships with the same name can be in service at the same time, the introduction of Columbia forced commanders to study the nuclear submarine naming guide for a long time. To avoid confusion, on June 3, 2022, the Navy announced the new name given to the future SSBN 826, USS District of Columbia and the next day held a keel-laying ceremony. However, the decision was made to not change the name of the class of submarine itself, Columbia. The new class of submarine was developed by General Dynamics Electric Boat in conjunction with Newport News Shipbuilding. In March of 2016, the U.S. Navy announced the selection of General Dynamics Electric Boat as the prime contractor and lead project yard, commissioning them to carry out most of the work to build the boats. The company Huntington Ingalls Industries, owned by the previously mentioned Newport News Shipbuilding, will act as the main subcontractor, completing from 22% to 23% of the necessary work on the design and construction of ships. The Navy decided not to reinvent the wheel, opting for the Columbia to be 560 feet long, like their Ohio-class predecessors, increasing only one foot in diameter, 42 feet for the Ohio versus 43 feet for the Columbia. But the amount of ammunition in the vessels themselves in this class have become somewhat more modest, a total of 12 submarines are set to be built, 
The Navy bought the first of these in fiscal year 2021, intending to acquire the second in fiscal year 2024, and the remaining 10 at one per year from fiscal year 2026 to 2035. If we're talking numbers, then in the presented budget of the Navy for the 2023 financial year, the total cost of purchasing 12 new submarines was estimated at $112.7 billion. The most expensive for the Navy will be the first unit, SSBN-826, costing a whopping $15.2 billion, including $6.56 billion in detailed design, non-recurring engineering, DDNRE. If we subtract DDNRE, then the cost of the first USS District of Columbia SSBN-826 is $8.62 billion. The second USS Wisconsin SSBN-827 is $9.28 billion. The third is $8.26 billion. And the fourth is $8.19 billion. As for the names and expenses of the remaining submarines of the class, so far they remain a mystery even in official documents addressed to the US Congress. The Columbia-class design includes 16 87-inch missile tubes instead of the identical 20 tubes from the Ohio class. Each of them will be armed with the Trident II D5LE missile, which will be upgraded to the D5LE II modification after fiscal year 2039, starting with the ninth submarine in the class. For self-defense, the boats will also launch heavy MK-48 torpedoes. The U.S. Navy's decision to design new submarines with 16 missile tubes instead of 20 was made to reduce the estimated average cost of purchasing boats. It quickly ran into criticism from pundits and American policymakers who worried that if the missile salvo of future submarines were reduced, the U.S. strategic nuclear forces might not have sufficient capabilities in the 2030s and beyond to fulfill their full deterrence role. In response, the U.S. Navy and other Department of Defense officials said that the decision to reduce the number of missiles to 16 was carefully considered by them even before design, and this number will give the U.S. strategic nuclear forces enough capabilities to carry out their tasks until the 2040s. At the same time, despite the decrease in the number of ammunition and consequently the space for them, the Columbia submarines overtook the Ohio predecessors in terms of displacement, reaching a figure of 20,800 tons against 18,750 tons. The design plan calls for Columbia-class submarines to be powered by an electrically powered propulsion system, rather than the mechanically powered ones found on other U.S. Navy submarines. This is expected to have a positive impact on both life cycle cost reduction and vessel acoustic signature. At the same time, Columbia will retain the nuclear reactor and steam turbines typical of U.S. Navy submarines. In such systems, the nuclear reactor heats water to steam. The turbines convert the heat in the steam into mechanical energy, and the generators convert that mechanical energy into electrical energy for use by the propulsion motors and other onboard systems. The U.S. Navy appreciated the idea of a submarine shaftless drive (SSD) with an electric motor mounted outside the pressure hull, like the future dreadnought submarines of the British Royal Navy. But it's not yet known whether the US Navy has adopted this technology. On modern nuclear submarines, steam turbines are connected to a gearbox and a shaft that rotates a propeller jet propulsion. With SSD, steam would drive electric turbo generators powered by steam turbines that would be connected to a non-penetrating electric junction at the aft end of the pressure hull, with a watertight electric motor mounted externally possibly an integrated motor propulsor arrangement, powering the pump jet propulsor, although SSD concepts without pump jet propulsors also exist. Another difference between the Ohio and Columbia class is that the latter will be equipped with a life-of-the-ship nuclear fuel core designed for the entire life of the ship. The Ohio, in turn, required midlife nuclear refueling. But despite this, Columbia will still need a midlife non-refueling overhaul. For example, an overhaul that does not include a nuclear refueling, to operate effectively over a 42-year service life. The list of other future features on the Columbia SSBNs may include X-shaped stern rudders, hydroplanes, sail-mounted drive planes, off-the-shelf equipment developed for previous submarine projects like the Virginia class, including not only a jet propulsion system, but also an anechoic coating and a large aperture bow sonar system (LAB). The Submarine Warfare Federated Tactical System SWFTS, which is a cluster of systems that combine sonar, optical imaging, weapon control, and other components. This data was made public back in 2012 by the U.S. Naval Institute citing Naval Sea Systems Command. There are plans for the first submarines of the class to be delivered in 2027. The initial operational readiness is expected in the summer of 2030, and the first patrol as early as 2031 
Considering the current war in Ukraine and a statement made by the head of the CIA about China's plans for Taiwan up until 2027, Colombia is of key importance for the United States in the foreseeable future. Like all the power of the nuclear triad, do you think Colombia will be a worthy replacement for Ohio? Share your opinion in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.